Hi and welcome to this uh, recording. Today I'm going to talk about how to develop for the web and how to think about the pictures color profile. First of all, we will start. This is about Sigma Photo Pro now. We're not going to talk about Aperture, not going to talk about uh, Adobe Camera Raw, but just Sigma Photo Pro. We start off by opening a picture at this guy here. It's a fellow that I met the other day when checking out the, the place. Uh, I already, already fixed the colors a little bit, so this is what I like. The first thing is when you click Save Image As, you have all these different color space options. Uh, the first one, sRGB. That's when you work with the internet directly. If you're going to post this picture directly into the internet, that means you, please, you press sRGB and probably also JPEG. This means it will be compressed for the internet and having the same color space that's made for the internet. So we can save this one now, we call it sRGB. Now to see if it works the way we want it, we open it. It ended up in the test folder here and we will open it using Safari. We can see here if it looks the same. Open this one at full size, and uh, make this very nice little comparison. And I think, yeah, it looks pretty much the same. Okay. So next is if you would like to add some text, if you would like to edit the photo further, then I suggest you don't save as sRGB and not as JPEG as well. So we're going to save as. And this time we'll select TIFF. You can do TIFF 8 or TIFF 16. TIFF 8 will throw away a lot of information, but if you're satisfied already, you know that. You're not going to continue to develop it further in Photoshop. You're just going to add some text, for example. Then I suggest you take EdBit. It takes a lot of less space. If you do 16, you will have lots of information. You can continue in an Aperture, for example, or in a, a Lightroom or whatever. But today we're going to do 8 bit and also change the color space. We don't want a narrow color space. We want as much possible, as much as possible. And I actually don't know which one is the, has the most information if it's a Adobe RGB or if it's Apple RGB. But we will do Apple RGB because I noticed that if I compare the output from SPP when I work with it and inside Photoshop later, it looks a little tiny better with the colors, it's more similar. So I take Apple RGB and I call this Apple RGB, like that. It's only for you and me, okay? It's nothing important with the name here. But, all right, so let's open it in Photoshop. So here we are. Now let's compare. We do this one again. By making it full size. Now we take this one. We can do it like this. You see, this is very much the same. So we have Apple RGB, and inside Photoshop it looks uh, the same as in Sigma Photo Pro. Uh, the last part now is to convert it for the web. If, uh, for example, I want to add some text and then put it on the internet again, then Apple RGB is not going to work because it's going to look very different in different browsers. So we need to convert it back to sRGB when we save it. For example, we fix the size or you know, stuff like that. So what we do now, we take save for web. And in case you have uh, CS4, you can go directly to save for web because inside the dialog here, you can select convert to sRGB directly here. But if, in case you have CS2, CS3 or whatever, then you go into edit and convert to profile. And that way you can change to sRGB here and press OK. Now you have the correct color space and it will look like you had it before, I mean in SPP. And then you save as or save for web and devices. And we do this now just for fun. Save. And we call it sRGB. sRGB like that. OK. This is very advanced. This. What? I had one more. How is that possible? Did I do the wrong in the trash? Oh, that's nice. 
good option. Like this. Okay. Let's open it again. This is the special version, yes, converted. Open it up here. This is the Sigma Photo Pro, and here we have the web version. And as you see, they have very much the same color. And you can be sure that most people on the web that has Safari, for example, they will see your picture as you wanted it. If you have Firefox users, they will not see it in the correct color space. In the correct color space, perhaps, but not for the right gamma. The gamma will be different. So, for the gamma setting. I open it up in this Firefox here to see what it looks like. You will see that it will have a little bit more punch. And uh, if there's any user out there that knows how to develop for Firefox users, then please tell me. Tell us. You can use the comment field. Um, otherwise, I think we just have to wait for a future future version of, uh, of um, Firefox. Okay, so that was what I wanted to tell you today. So save for TIFF and app RGB or go directly to sRGB. And ask everybody around you to get Safari. Safari 4 is a very nice browser, it's very fast. So it's not a bad thing to have on the PC or on the Mac. Okay, so goodbye.